All right, in this video, we're discussing two basic principles of probability. So there are two principles you need to understand about probability. Let's first develop a little bit of intuition about it. There are some events that are certain to occur, and there are some events that are impossible to occur, and then there's stuff in between, right? So the question is, what would a certain event's probability be? What would an impossible event's probability be, right? And then what could the events in between those two extremes probabilities look like? Okay. So all probability values are always between 0 and 1 inclusive. So you can represent 0 as sort of 0% 0 chance something occurs, right? Or 1 for 100% chance that it occurs. So these are just the decimal values of those percentages, right? So with certainty, it's 100% chance or as a decimal 1. And if it's impossible, there's a 0% chance, or in other words, zero probability of it occurring. Unlikely events would be closer to zero in, ter in terms of probability or proportion, right? And then likely events would be closer to one, right? So a four in five chance is an 80% chance or a 0.8 chance. And that is a fairly likely event. If it's a 50-50 shot, or in other words, 0 0.50 probability, it's right in the middle. And then of course, if something is unlikely, it's gonna be down here near zero. So the most important thing to remember though is if you're working out a probability problem and you get a negative answer, you've made a mistake because negative answers are not possible. If you work out a probability problem and you get an answer like 1.05, that'd be 105% as a decimal, as a percentage, and that's not possible either, right? You can't have more than 100% chance of something occurring. 100% means it's a certainty to occur, so therefore it makes no sense to say you have 105% chance of something occurring. Like, you know, the extra 5% just doesn't make any sense. Okay, the sum of the probabilities for a set of mutually exclusive exhaustive events slash outcomes is one. So this is a mouthful and you know, I'm kind of trying to blend two different ideas here at once, but let me try to explain it to you um, so it makes intuitive sense. If I were to tell you that there's a 10% chance of rain today, could you tell me the chance that it doesn't rain? I'm guessing you would say 90% chance it doesn't rain. And the reason why is because in your head you intuitively understand this. If you think about it, I've set up a universe where there's only two possibilities, right? Rain or not rain by the question, right? So if I say the chance that it rains is 10%, what's the chance it doesn't rain? You know there's only two outcomes in this scenario, right? Either it rains or it does something other than rain. So intuitively you know that if you add those two probabilities together, they have to add to 100%. And the reason why you know that is because you say, hey, it either rains or it doesn't. There are no other possible cases. So if you've accounted for all the cases, then you must account for all the probability. And all the probability in this case is 100%. So you know in your, your head, okay, 10% chance of rain means a 90% chance that it doesn't rain. So you're basically using the same idea. So when events are mutually exclusive, it means that they can't occur together. So they're separated and distinct in that sense, right? So you know either it rains or it doesn't rain. Those are mutually exclusive events. And then exhaustive means you cover all the cases, right? It covers everything, right? So, you know, if an experiment uh, only has, say, six outcomes, like tossing a single die, right? You have either the outcome, it turns up one, turns up two, turns up three, turns up four, turns up five, turns up six, right? Then you have a set of mutually exclusive events because it's either one on the die or two on the die. It can't be one and two at the same time, right? If it's just one die, it's either one or two or three or four or five or six. So those events are mutually exclusive. And the list is exhaustive because the outcomes are either one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's it, right? There's no other possible outcome. You can't get a zero, you can't get a seven, you can't get a fraction or a decimal, right? So the die either turns up one, two, three, four, five, or six. So you've got all the outcomes accounted for, so it's an exhaustive list. They're mutually exclusive events, meaning that they don't overlap in any way, there's no commonality between them. So this means essentially that if I sum up the individual probabilities of each of those outcomes, I will end up with a total of one. And sure enough, that's the case. The chance you roll a one on the die is one six, the chance you roll a two is one six, so on and so forth, they're all one six. And if you add those six probabilities together, you get six over six, which is of course one. So that's just an example illustrating the idea that the sum of the probabilities for any experiment for all the sample space is gonna add up to one. So again, the sample space means all the possible outcomes, right? So if you add up the probability for each individual outcome or each individual item in a sample space, it has to add up to one or 100%.